Hello everyone, now this is a Power Mac G5, although the truth is a little bit more complicated than that. This Power Mac G5 is actually an Xbox 360 Alpha 2 dev kit. The earliest known footage of the Alpha 2s came from E3 2005, where almost all the demos and trailers shown were all actually running on Alpha 2 hardware, as seen in the picture on screen right now. Many reporters who were present at E3 2005 got to try out games like Top Spin 2 and Need for Speed, but they noted that they didn't look all that great for a next-gen console. This is because the Alpha 2 hardware is in fact considerably weaker than the final hardware used in the Xbox 360 that we know and love. For starters, the Alpha 2 featured a 2GHz PowerPC dual processor CPU, whereas the Xbox 360 Xenon processor featured a tri-core PowerPC CPU clocked at 3.2GHz, making it considerably more powerful than the Alpha 2. The Alpha 2, like the Xbox 360, had 512 megabytes of RAM, but unlike the 360's GDDR3 shared RAM setup, the Alpha 2's was 512 megabytes of fixed DDR RAM. Finally, the Alpha 2's GPU was also less capable than the Xbox 360's Xenos GPU. The X800 XT did not have a unified shader architecture while Xenos did, allowing each pipeline to run either pixel or vertex shaders, which made the GPU much more efficient. If you're looking to make your own Alpha 2, the X800 XT can be swapped out for similar graphics cards, although we won't be covering that in today's video. The 360 even had 10 megabytes of ED RAM, which effectively allowed the 360 in some cases to have free anti-aliasing, a feature that would impact performance if it was active on the Alpha 2. So just what can you do with the Alpha 2? For starters, it supports both wired and wireless Xbox 360 controllers to control the Alpha 2 with. The Dolphin Tech demo is also present on the Alpha 2. There's even an early version of the Xbox 360 Blades dashboard, though as you would expect, a lot of the options are non-functional. The Alpha 2 even features an early version of the original Xbox emulator, codenamed Fusion. There are a few noticeable differences here from the final version used in the Xbox 360. Firstly, unlike the final version used in the Xbox 360, original Xbox games in the Alpha 2 do not get upscaled, as the Alpha 2 lacks the hardware to do so, meaning that all original Xbox games run at their native resolution. On the Xbox 360, original Xbox games are upscaled to your desired resolution, resulting in a slightly better image. Furthermore, performance as you would expect isn't as good as the Xbox 360. We tried out Halo and Halo 2, and both games provided some interesting results. Halo struggled with the first mission, but on the second mission Halo, the game performed surprisingly well and maintained a decent enough frame rate to be playable, though it fell short of what the original Xbox and the 360 are capable of. Trying to set up a system link game on Halo 1 resulted in the Alpha 2 locking up, but that's to be expected on an early version of the emulator. But what about Halo 2? Unlike the first Halo, Halo 2's frame rate was extremely poor, making it unplayable in my opinion. As you can see, the frame rate was so low that in some instances the game even appeared to freeze for a few moments. It goes without saying that Halo 2 runs much better on the 360 than it does on the Alpha 2. Interestingly enough, we were actually able to get a system link match going between the Alpha 2, an Xbox, and an Xbox 360. The footage you are seeing now is Alpha 2 gameplay from our tests. The frame rate also appears to be slightly better than the campaign, though it still falls well short of the Xbox 360's performance. The emulator also had a few graphical issues in both Halo 1 and Halo 2. Take note of the graphical corruption in both the lighting, the HUD, and the level geometry, and even the weapons. It looks like the rocket launcher got a weapon skin thanks to these issues. Still, it's impressive that Microsoft had original Xbox games running on the PowerPC architecture at such an early stage. So you're probably sat there wondering, can it play Xbox 360 games? In theory, the Alpha 2 could potentially play games that were developed on it, such as Condemned, Fall Auto, Cameo, and maybe even more. But sadly, only Fall Auto has been leaked, and since that was developed on an earlier kernel, the game crashes on the Alpha 2 immediately. As for retail Xbox 360 titles, 
Again, the answer is sadly no. It cannot play retail Xbox 360 games. So just how powerful is the Alpha 2 then? Well, since we can't play retail Xbox 360 games, we decided to think outside of the box in order to show off the performance difference of the two. Since the Alpha 2 is a Power Mac G5, we decided to pick a handful of games that ran on the Power Mac G5 that also had Xbox 360 ports and then compare the two together. In these tests, we have decided to try and match the Xbox 360 resolution and settings. We also have to take into account that we know the Alpha 2 is already weaker than the 360 and that console optimization can lead to some pretty great performance gains. There's also the fact that the Alpha 2 will be running Mac OS, which is less optimised for games than the Xbox 360 and even Windows. So with that out of the way, without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have the original Call of Duty on the Alpha 2 and its re-release, Call of Duty Classic, on the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 version targets 60 FPS at a 720p resolution. The Xbox 360, on the other hand, manages to stick close to 60 FPS in most cases, but it does drop frames in more intense scenes. Although overall, it offers a more stable performance than the Alpha 2. Overall, it's not a bad start for the Alpha 2. Next up, we have our second Call of Duty title, and also an Xbox 360 launch title, Call of Duty 2. The Xbox 360 version targets 60 FPS and it runs at a 720p resolution. For the Alpha 2, we have the game running with max settings and no anti-aliasing, in order to match the Xbox 360 settings. Unfortunately, this proved to be too much for the Alpha 2, with the frame rate hitting lows of 10 FPS. The Xbox 360 performed much better, but it still saw drops to 30 FPS when the action heats up, thanks to its double buffer V-Sync, but the experience was far better than the Alpha 2's slideshow. Finally, we have another Xbox 360 launch title, Quake 4. The Xbox 360 version is notorious for having a horrible frame rate, so it will be interesting to see how it compares to the Mac version running on Alpha 2 hardware. The Xbox 360 version runs at 720p and has an unlocked frame rate with no anti-aliasing, and so we will match these settings on our Alpha 2. The Alpha 2's frame rate was pretty much all over the place, hitting close to 50 or 60 FPS in some areas, but dropping to the low teens in others. The Xbox 360 also had extremely variable performance, but it did have a higher frame rate overall, so it was still more playable than the Alpha 2. Overall, the Alpha 2 was quickly replaced with the beta dev kits before again being replaced with the final dev kits. The Alpha 2 is still an interesting piece of Xbox 360 history, and while it clearly isn't as powerful as the 360, it's been fun taking a look at what the Alpha 2 is capable of. That's all for now. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more, and consider following me on Twitch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.